What are you doing? What are you doing to my truck? Stand. That's right. That's right. What's going on guys? Welcome back to It's Lit. Today is brake install day. So we got these awesome power stop brakes, uh, drilled and slotted rotors. Actually, yep, they're drilled and slotted and their Z36 Extreme brake package. Brake pads. Package pads. Extreme. Extreme. <laughs> so as you guys know, I tow, uh, for the S14, I tow, uh, I tow all the equipment cross country. So, you know, our trailer weighs anywhere from 15 to 18,000 pounds fully loaded. So your braking, uh, your braking performance is, uh, is extremely crucial for your safety. Um, so I have about 96,000 miles on this truck. I believe I have about 30 to 40,000 on the current brakes that are on it. And, uh, We'll go ahead and take a look. They're definitely time for uh, for some repair. We like to get there in a timely manner. So, I'm excited. Things are massive. Like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. They're heavy. They are definitely heavy. Don't break your wrist. <laughs> <laughs> so, looking at our old components here. They don't look all too bad. But I think what we have is better. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Stopping power. So tell me the difference in the advantage of uh, using a uh, drilled and slotted rotor. There's uh, advantages and disadvantages. Advantages being uh, slotted really cuts the pads, so the pads are fresh every time you brake. They don't warp too much. Um, drilled can have benefits as well as dissipating heat depending on if the drill holes are too close together or too far apart. If they're too close together, you, they're prone for cracking between the holes. If they're far enough apart, then you should be okay to get rid of the, the cracking situation. Right, but so let's, that, take a, so let's take a look at our, at our rotors of what we have here and you give me a, a general uh, consensus of what you think. They're good. They're, they're for what they, what they are, what they look like, they're pretty decent. The holes are spaced far enough apart. I wouldn't see any cracking happening. I've seen other generic brands where the drill holes are closer together mm -hmm. and having a closer hole between each other it has less material there. They tend to heat up and you will see cracks going from hole to hole. Understood. I've, I've seen that a couple times. I actually did not know that. Yeah, you'll see this crack stretch from hole to hole if they're too close together. Oh, wow, that's dangerous. But other than that... And all. then their brake pads. Carbon ceramic. Copper free, thermal scorch. Hey, what's up? Oh, look at this beard. Yeah. Look at this beard. Look at this yeah, beard. My, my first go at an, an Asian beard. This is uh, this is Mr. Mike Meam. This is Mr. GT Radial himself. Hi, everyone. If it wasn't for this guy, we wouldn't be drifting this year. So yeah, big tire, <laughs> big tire. That's right. We got them big boys. Like them big boys. So. Um, amidst all the uh, all the action that's been going on in the world, um, I figured that it was time for me to build another streetcar. So today we picked up this 2004 350Z Roadster. It's uh, black on black, black leather. It's been updated uh, 2007 interior, the body panels and stuff. Six speed manual. It's got about a hundred thousand miles on it and got this car for a really good deal off of Craigslist. And um, I, just want a, I just want a cool car to, to cruise around so I can uh, keep some miles off the truck over there. Uh, I love my truck, don't get me wrong, but it is quite expensive to drive every single day, Shawnee boy. Um, cost of owning a diesel is right up there with uh, owning a, a high-end car. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a tool definitely for our business. Um, this is how we get to the events. It's how we're able to uh, get there safely to uh, put on a show for all you guys. And um, like everything is bigger. You know, your brakes are bigger, your tires are bigger. We got six tires here. Um, it takes like three gallons of oil. Um, everything about owning a diesel truck is, uh, is definitely an investment and it should be viewed as such. So 
Um, we're getting the truck dialed as much as we can as soon as we hit the road here. So, and I have, like I mentioned, I have about 96,000 miles on this truck now. I do have an extended bumper to bumper warranty of 100,000, but um, I'm trying to stay well within that range just to, in case anything happens. This thing has been bulletproof. It's never left me stranded. It's never given me an issue, but I intend to keep it that way. So, with that being said, um, we came up on this. It's just something fun. I've never had a convertible before. I live here in Southern California, so our weather is super nice. Got the wheels off, going through everything. This thing already has Tang coilovers, but I think that we need to switch it up to some Feel 441s. Um, I love Feel suspension products. I've been using them on my drift cars for well over 10 years now. And uh, I love working with Odie and Amy. They're great people. And uh, I think that would definitely be a great fit for this project. Um, and as well, I'm going to throw my, my heritage on here. Just kind of style it up. Just style it up. Just a cool little daily cruiser, top down, wind in your hair, sound system on, just cruising. Black on black, it's my style. It's not perfect. It's got some blemishes. Like It's got some spider cracking right here on the paint, little clips here and there. But for the price that I paid for it, I can't really complain. This is never a fun process, pulling off these center caps. Oh my god. Don't hurt yourself. Yeah, this shit doesn't even want to go. I really don't know how to get these off. Oh, there you go. Nah. There's also another one from the side right here. Too. Yeah, but I only have one of these. Mm -hmm. These things, those don't fit in there because of the angle. Hmm. Well, you're over here. So, what'd you do? I had to cut this down <laughs> to fit it in the fucking stupid little <laughs> holes. There's my boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Bitch and a half to get these fucking caps. Yeah, off. these center caps are just like really flush fit. And they have like these little locking rings that sit on the uh, on the lug nuts. <laughs> so yeah, you have to basically have like a like a hook tool to be able to pull this off in order to pull the wheels off. So well I'm really glad that you did, but yeah, let's take these are the these are the ones that definitely can I get a light? Gosh, you're always so it's, it's, it's dark in over here. Jeez. Does my light I gotta help? deal with it all the time, guys. I'm telling you, I gotta deal with it all the time. Does my light help? Yeah, let's see right here. So you can see the pads are definitely getting worn from what you can see. You can't really see that well in here. From the back side right here. You can see. actually see the Here we go, here we go. Yeah, as you can see right here, they're pretty close down to the metal. So they definitely needed some attention. Yeah, you can see it, dude. See that right there? Back pad. Yeah, the back pad's like, and then oh, right, gone. right there, that groove in the middle is the actual pad. Yeah, look at that. It's like two percent. Yeah. So definitely, I told you these are the ones that needed the most attention. They're all getting done. <laughs> They're all getting done. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get to work. So while Shawnee is busy taking the uh, the rear hubs off, I got the wheels off on the uh, on the Black Z, and I want to see how low these coilovers can go. Doesn't seem like there's a lot of adjustment in there, but your boy likes to stunt, so I want to see as low as I can go with my, uh, my current equipment. All right, so walk me through this side for the rear, for people that haven't done this before. Uh, brake caliper bolts, and then the, the caliper bracket, and then off in the front, and this shit falls off. So take this off, you have to obviously pull the rear axle out yep. in order to pull this hub with this rotor off. Mm -hmm. Then obviously it. you get some, uh, get some zip ties, hang up the caliper up on your leaf spring so uh, you're not putting any strain on any of your brake lines. You get screwdriver. And this, uh, this does take a little bit of finessing. Uh, when you pull off this front cover, you'll pop it out and you'll see there's like an inner, uh, there's inner, like an inner locking mechanism in here. You just take a, uh, you take a pry bar and a hammer, spin it loose, pop it off, and then this hub slides off and uh, then you're ready to go.
Specialty. And you need that boy. Oh, oh so hot. what kind of socket is that? It's an E-socket? So it's an E-socket. E18? Yeah. It's a little six-point star. A little six-point star. So if you guys see that... Damn it, Josie! I'm not trying to film anything. I can't <laughs> hear myself! Good riddance! Good riddance! So if you guys want to know, it's an E6. Oh my god. Ready to go. Ready for Atlanta, baby. sure to lock tight all the bolts. Something is uh, important as your uh, your brake rotor being attached to your hub, you definitely want to make sure that it's locked and secured into place, especially with all the road miles, all the abuse tendencies driving cross country and day to day use. See that little arm, that little stick? Put it to that one right there. If I can see it. It went in. Alright, this is where I gotta tap it with the hammer and a screwdriver. This side all wrapped up. Got some fresh pads on there. Look at all that meat. Look at all that meat right there. Huge difference from uh, from the ones that we replaced. Cherry rotors on there. This bad boy's ready to go. See some miles. So guys, the front is super simple. Obviously, disconnect the caliper from the knuckle. Put that aside. Sean is just um, prying apart the caliper. He's prying apart the caliper because obviously when you um, when you install the new pads are going to have more meat on there, especially with the new rotor, and you're going to need the caliper to be expanded uh, as much as possible to be able to fit the caliper fitted with the new pads onto the new rotor. So you can do this with a C clamp. You can take that off with an old pad, put it on there, and use a C clamp, or you can do what Sean's doing and use Push the pad. The pistons. Just pushing the pistons. Yep, just pushing the pistons back in um, to being fully recessed. It takes a little bit of prying, but we'll do that. So now these are ready to come off. He's going to disconnect the caliper from the knuckle. I need a zip tie that's on the other side. So I can we'll zip tie, zip that. tie that. So the kit comes with all brand new hardware. Sean's fitting them in there right now. He's being challenged with 10 minutes aside. So he's taking it very serious. <laughs> We're gonna get done. I'm just gonna try and do it quick. So, what was your opinion from from installing everything with all the with all the pieces provided? Effortless, easy. Doesn't really need instructions, even though they're not included. But <laughs> it's pretty easy. You take the parts off, you put the same parts back on. They're just cleaner, easier to look at, easier to handle. Good quality. The only thing I did notice. These little ears are here pulled out. These inside ears are flat, so you want them flat on the inside or else they're scratching on your rotor and they're not gonna sound pretty. Okay. That's the only thing. So definitely take notice of that, guys. I'm excited. I mean, I think these are awesome and uh, one thing that PowerStop really prides themselves in is uh, minimal to no brake dust with their... Uh, these are carbon fiber. Their, their carbon ceramic design, yeah. 
But yeah, this is this is a really high quality kit. Like I said, man, this is like race car track day technology for your uh, for your tow vehicle. And like I mentioned before, guys, you know, at the end of the day, performance is one thing, safety is another, and they all correlate together. And when you're driving cross country, we easily drive 20 to 30,000 miles a year. And especially in trusting hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of our, our prized possessions, we got to make sure that we're safe, not only from our prized possessions, but for our lives at stake. So if you guys are in the market for a brake kit, definitely look at PowerStop as your next option for your upgrade. Man, this thing just looks sick. Both those look good. I can dig it. Can you dig that? Yeah. Like, would you get that? Can you have some of too? Maybe. Maybe <laughs> if you're good. Maybe if you're good. Well, she's all done. Back on the floor. Ready to go. Ready to rock. Thank you again to my babyface angel, Sean Stromer. The man. The myth. The legend. You're the man, dude. Thank you for all your help. So that's going to wrap it up. Power Stop Brake Z36 Extreme Towing Package install on a 2017 F350. Again, guys, almost 100,000 miles on this truck. It's never let me down, and we are just uh, doing everything we can to, uh, to ensure the longevity and the performance and the safety of this vehicle. So again, if you guys are in the market for what I consider to be the best bolt-on performance up brake upgrade for your F350 or any other truck that you are using to tow your uh, your family hauler, your race car, your boat, anything cross country. If you're going fishing, uh, definitely check out Power Stop Brakes for your ultimate bolt-on application. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you guys next week. See you soon.